Burke show that often because people don't like it as much as the other show, mainly because I haven't, I haven't switched the intros back and forth. Uh, but I had to come to work uh, today's Saturday. I had to come into work and finish a report I'm writing on search engines and how people interpret them. Yeah, that's right. Um, it's a wide world of research. That's what you got to do. And I thought while I was here, I should talk about some of the new gizmos and things I got recently. Some of you out there in Macland might like. First up is the Elgato. Video encoder hardware. What the hell is it? Well, it's a little uh, USB dongle action thingy, and it shouldn't do that, but it's just a little USB video encoder. That's right, it's an MPEG uh, 4 video encoder for formats like uh, Apple TV, iPod, H264, and all that other goodness. Why did I get it? Um, we're using these Sanyo cameras, these Sanyo HD2s. Currently in the field, we have a bunch. We have four of these now in the field. I'll do. I'll talk about that here in just a second. We have four of those, and they shoot an MPEG-4, and uh, they're great cameras. They have some downsides. So I'll talk about that. Um, and we have all these interviews. We have these three-hour interviews. All right. All right. We send we send a team to Beijing to hang out in somebody's living room and they talk about research and innovation that's what we do mainly you hang out in your living room and you, and you ask them about what's the ideal toaster look like if you were going to have a toaster in the future what should it be like and they talk about all that kind of goodness um, and that's three hours of video and it ends up being about maybe a gig or maybe 1.2 or 1.5 gigs of MPEG-4 video usually shot at 640 by 40 30 frames a second I don't do the high resolutions because we don't need the high resolutions. We're going to give the client something they can play back on their computer mostly. Don't do DVDs that much. Um, people just want lots of mobile media. You know what I mean? If I can get it on their phone, hell, they'd love it. So we started at 640 by 40, 30 frames a second, and uh, it's decent. And you get a ton of time on that camera, which is a big bonus. Uh, but the problem is, is now manipulating that video. That's one interview, okay? So if one interview is 1.5 gigs. And I've done 90 of them. It's a lot of footage hanging out. And it's not as convenient as tape, which is my favorite format really of all time. That's where this guy comes into play. And what this is going to do for me is it's going to encode that video down to a much more workable format uh, faster. And this thing cooks. This thing flies. Um, you know, I, I usually use Visual Hub. If I do, if I do the compression straight in quick time, you know, I don't know what the times are per se, but basically it's kind of like that. That was going to be 90 minutes. Visual Hub will usually do it in about an hour. This will do it in about 20 minutes, um, and that's a big increase for me. I mean, I like Visual Hub and it's cool and all, but this basically takes all the encoding right off the processor and just makes it a heck of a lot faster. Um, and I'm, you know, it's hard to judge on big files because on big files, three-hour interview, it's going to take a while. You know, it's not going to be instant. Uh, but the fact that it takes it off the processor and it allows me to do everything else on the Mac all day long without it ever bothering the encoding process, it's kind of nice. But sometimes I worry about that. If you're encoding a bunch of files and you're in PowerPoint and you're in Excel and you're in all these other applications working and whatnot, you know, what's happening to that background process? Well, here it takes care of all that. Um, I like the fact it's nice and small and I can take it home and use it at home. <laughs> so this baby was um, super easy install, um, nice smart software, it's just, it's a really good buy. 99 bucks. Don't think about it, just get it. That's the point. Anything that falls under 300 bucks, you just buy. You might think I'm not made of money, but really you are because you can control what you can buy. So just buy one of these. Um, one other thing, you know, let's talk about the let's talk about the Sanyo. Sanyo HD2, seven megapixel, 10x zoom with 100x digital zoom, which you'll probably never use. This is a very sexy little camera. We like it. Get a wide angle uh, lens adapter for it, which makes it a little heavy on the front side. Fit in your hand, shoot, go. Um, I usually play a couple of different resolutions around here. 
You're shooting HD, but I'm never going to probably use HD. Well, I might use it for um, personal projects, but most of the time, if I'm using it as a workhorse camera, this is meant to be a new workhorse camera for the research generation. All right, people are going away from tape and they're trying to get more. This is perfect for the researcher because this is small. Um, yeah, I mean, that's why it's small, fits in your pocket. Uh, we, have, we have these 8 gig. Uh, 8 gig SDHC cards in there, high capacity, class 6, super fast cards, 8 gigs of space, tons of room, and you just shoot, shoot, shoot all day. Nice things about it, external mic support, which is very good, flash is nice and decent. Um, not, you know, I've never really taken a whole lot of stills with these kinds of cameras. This is kind of a crossover camera, does stills and video, but it's really a video camera, if you ask me. Um, downsides, let's talk about that. HDMI connection port there, that's kind of groovy if you're doing HDB. This little adapter thing, you gotta have this. If you ever lose this on this camera, you're screwed. So don't ever lose this little thing. This little thing plugs in here, alright? You got your tripod mount, which is very important. But the problem is, is that if you put this thing on a tripod, alright, and you, you want to plug in the AC cord from this little thing, you can't do it together because you need to be flush with the tripod. So what do you do? Well, Samuel will occasionally send me, and they're usually pretty good about it, um, and they've sent me two in the past, so I'm still waiting on two more, hopefully they'll come them soon, the tripod adapter, which is just basically a long rod, whatever, that sticks here, and then you've got your tripod, and you screw it in, and then your camera sets up a little bit. It's not a great solution. Samuel should have definitely not have released this type of camera without the adapter, first of all, being in the box, which is totally important. And secondly, um, they should, it'd be, it would have been nice, much nicer just to have it built in. The AC built in here, maybe on the back of the, where the SD card goes in, you know? These are SD, HD cards, whatever. Yeah. That's probably the biggest downside of it. Because when you're doing interviews, the battery's not going to last beyond two hours. You will maybe do an hour, even that's pushing. So how do you capture that long time? You gotta put it on a tripod, you gotta plug an AC cord, you can't do it out of the box, and that's a big F you in my book. Um, so, you know, that's kind of a downside to that camera, and you have to get an adapter. Some people out there have made adapters. I've seen some, uh, I don't know, I've seen some ones that people have put together by hand, you know, you know hanging out in their, their workshop, wood shop, or whatever, doing that. Um, the bag that comes with it is okay, but it's kind of small. Uh, it uses a uh, proprietary USB cord. That kind of sucks too. Um, comes with lots of goodness, lots of good software. Not using any of it. I'm using iMovie and Final Cut Pro. The last thing I want to talk about, um, and we started using this more lately, and I've always wanted one. I finally had to go and get one. Uh, this is the Sony. GVD D1000. And uh, why? Well, it's mini DV deck. It's a mini DV deck with a lot of nice built in capability goodness. If you're shooting a lot of DV, this is a nice thing to have sitting next to your Mac doing your editing from. You know, it's got all your firewire, video in. It's even got a nice battery connection on the back, so only, you could totally make it luggable if you really wanted to. Um, and, and tape is nice just because you're shooting at the highest resolution already. Well, not highest, not HD, but if you're editing, if you're just editing, folks, you shouldn't DV, I think it's fine, but some people don't like it. Um, for what I'm doing, where I'm doing a lot of, you know, make it up as you go type research sometimes, <laughs> you just have to be on your feet. You just, you don't have a whole lot, of, you're working on so many other angles of the project and you need stuff, you need technology that's just going to be there at work. And Sony and Mini DV format, along with technology like this deck and all the other goodness that's out there, um, works. It works. It works well. And it's not industrial. I don't need a six thousand dollar deck strapped to my Mac. Not for what I'm doing. Maybe if you're doing production, yes, that's great. But that little baby, Amazon, thousand bucks, nine fifty, something like that. Um, I've got another one coming in. Going to put that in the lab, so that'll be groovy lab folks. Uh, more and more clients need to edit stuff. We're seeing a big surge in that. Everybody wants to edit their stuff. Before it was just kind of like, give me the tape so I'll go home. But now everybody's like, oh, I need more video, I need more video, I need more video. Um, 
And it's going to get scary when they're asking for HD. No, no one's asked for that in the lab yet. And I don't know if I'd shoot HD in a lab because you're not getting, there's nothing really dynamic in there going on. I guess, you know, for me, if you're going to shoot that HD, that'd be great if you're in the jungle or you're watching a ball game. But maybe, you know, watching nine people sitting around a table and talking about a toaster in HD seems kind of lame. But, hey, who knows? You know what I mean? I'm just implementing. You know, they just tell me what to buy and I go and get it. Well, I, I tell them what works. That's really what I tell them. So, yeah, we're at work and then we're going to be taking off soon. I'm going to go test this baby today. I'm going to shoot it in some multiple formats. Uh, I'm going to play around with some HD modes on it. Um, and I don't know, I'm just kind of fun with that camera. Shoot some footage, have some fun. Uh, what else I got for you? That's it. That's, that's pretty good. That's three good tech reviews. The Elgato, uh, probably pronounced it wrong. But this is just a buy. Just get this. I don't care what you're thinking about. Just go and get it. It's really cool to see it encode things really fast. If you if you've ever been if you've been in the industry at all and you you've been plagued by the classic render time and you you know I guess the industry I mean like if you've ever been doing 3D or any of the graphics and motion arts or whatever else you know rendering sucks you know compression sucks uh, and you know you, you hate being slowed down. Video coder on the USB thing, stick, sexy. Get it. Sit for the flues. Enjoy your weekend, folks. Out of here. Let's try this again. I don't know. I had a bad clip, and I had a really funky ending. And I had to fix it, and then it didn't render, and I don't know what happened. Anyways, just want to say uh, thanks for watching. I do have a new show on Operator Eleven. Playing around in that whole broadcast video space with the webcams. I'd love for you, some of y'all show up and um, check out the profile uh, on, on uh, Operator 11. That is, I'm on there as Kuvis. Kuvis is another name I use. Same thing, Flusy Speak, all that good stuff, but I don't, just Kuvis. Anyways, that's K-O-O-V-U-S. Name of the show is Primary Beat Selections. It's about the music I download. Talk a little about trends and technology and some Mac goodness, but mainly it's about music and uh, crazy videos I find online, a lot of just freaky stuff. Anyways, cool show, check it out. Here's some music that I'm currently listening to. I'm going to play in this track here at the end, along with some of the graphics that I'm making for the show. It's pretty cool, Operator 11, it's like MySpace for video. Um, it's alpha, so there's a lot of things that are cool about it, and some things that are wackadoo about it, but. It'll shape out uh, along the road later on. Also, I'm doing some shows and channels on Mogus, which is another kind of Operator 11-ish type show clone thing, Majiggy. It's a little more interesting. It offers a lot more graphics and a little more functionality. I'll get into that.